So I haven't done much with my 18650 power wall in a while. I thought I'd make a video and show you all how I connect my PC to my power wall. There's a few different options for connection. Uh, you could buy these little guys. This is, uh, you hook it up through the Wi-Fi. So this creates its own Wi-Fi hotspot. You connect to it and then you use the software. This here is uh, Bluetooth. Uh, again, you can download the app on your phone and then you'll be able to connect through your phone. Now for the PC version, you need to have the actual cable because they change the orientation of the pins. If you try and buy an aftermarket one, it won't work with your EP Ever solar charge controller. So first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to go to the EP Ever website and you're gonna to wanna to download their software. Uh, this is the software I'm gonna be using for this video. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is plug this into your charge controller and into your computer. So here on the charge controller, you can see it's labeled COM. This is for the COMS port. And then the USB just plugs into your computer. So now that your computer's recognized that there's a connection, you're gonna wanna right click on your start menu and then go up to device manager. And then in device manager, you're going to want to find the connection, which is probably going to be under your comms port. So keep in mind comms three. So you're going to want to right click and go to properties. And over here on port settings, you need to click off RS 485. So now you can open up your EP ever software and it's going to look like this. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to click add a station, comms three, that's perfect. Now anywhere where there is an asterisk, you're gonna to wanna to fill out. Oh, I'm gonna be about 120 watts. Peak power, I oh, will say 50. Number of parallel arrays, I have three. Oh, sorry. Actually, I only have one because I have uh, I have three in series, so I don't have any parallel arrays. Station number one, that's fine. China, um, let's change that to north. Uh, it is kind of a zoo around here sometimes. Sean, let's go with roll two. And uh, rated wattage, 120. I'm doing a 12 volt battery pack. Uh, amp hours, I think I'm around 40. And then we'll click add. Station was successful. So now you're gonna wanna go to port configuration. So we have comms three, da, 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 that's good. So we're gonna wanna add this. Okay, and then we can exit out here. So now we have our station set up and we can hit start monitor. And there we go, we have all of our stats coming up from us from our charge controller. Uh, the temperature sensor is not plugged in right now. So right now it's saying the battery temperature is 25 degrees. Um, that is just the default setting because I don't have the temperature sensor plugged in right now. And here's all my stats. The it shows the device temperature. So 19.58 right now is the temperature of the device itself. Uh, let's plug in some solar and see what happens. So outside I have three 40 watt panels connected in series. I'm gonna check their polarity. You always wanna check the polarity of your panels before you plug them in. So 63.3 volts coming in right now. So this solar charge controller on the top, there's a sticker, this will do 100 volts. So make sure you're staying within your voltage range and your wattage range. And right here, this is the app for the BMS, for the charge controller, or for the batteries, not the charge controller. Okay, and we're ready to give it some sun. So 
So we'll watch the stats for a minute. Solar, 63.7. So now it's dropping down. You can see my watts. Right now it's mapping out the best way to send in the power. So you can see the solar is 1.4 amps. The power coming in is six, well, almost six amps. And then you can see here also we've got uh, we've got almost six amps coming in. Which is pretty good because these solar panels are rated for I think 2.3 amps. So I'm almost getting six amps. It'll do 6.9, but that's like ideal conditions, no clouds. So that's pretty good for the power coming in. Then if we look, there's they give us a graph here. This graph here is just going to show the solar input, the battery, and then the load. So I've got not really any much of a load coming on right now. Uh, you can also set the parameters. So I'm going to, they have pre-configured parameters for lithium or lithium ion batteries. So we can see here. So we're going to read. Okay, this is the parameters that are set up right now. So this setting here will give us perfect uh, setting for a 3S configuration. If you're going to be doing a 4S, 5S, 7S, every time you go up in the step, just put the nominal voltage of the battery, which is 3.7 every time. So if I was doing a 4S instead of a 3S, I would add 3.7 onto all these numbers. Uh, lithium ion protection, that's going to be your low temperature protection. I'll show you that in a second. Even though I already have my own low temperature protection, um, you can set it on the charge controller, but it doesn't go high enough for what I'd like. It goes to zero degrees. I like about five degrees. And then just click update. And there you go. It's stored into the charge controller now. Now for the low temperature protection. Okay, so under parameters, device parameters, and then device parameter settings. Uh, you can see here, you can set your low temperature uh, disconnect. So you have to fill out all of these parameters. So backlight, that's going to be for the, when you turn that on, it's backlit, 60 seconds, that's good. Uh, device over temperature, well, I'm going to put mine at uh, 50. Recovery temperature, 40. Battery upper temperature limit. So if I had my temperature sensor in here and pressed against the batteries, I could uh, sense and disconnect if the batteries get too hot, which I will do. And also my BMS does it as well. So I'm gonna change this to 50. Uh, battery low temperature. Now zero degrees is the lowest you can go. Uh, I have this set to five degrees. I did a video on how I set up my own low temperature disconnect and uh, lower temperature charging limit. Actually, the battery lower temperature, I think that's just for discharging. So we'll actually put that to minus 10. Low temperature charging limit. I did not see this, they must have updated this. And low temperature discharge. So we'll go with uh, minus five. Huh. So I'm gonna test that, I'm gonna get a, um, temperature sensor and plug it in. Just give me one second. Okay, I have my temperature sensor. Oh, that's a long cable. Let's plug this in. There, and you can see the uh, temperature for the battery. So let's see what happens if I cool it off. Okay, I wonder if when I hit five degrees, if the solar is going to stop. Oh, and there it goes. Okay. All right. I did not know that the EP ever has low temperature disconnect like that. That must be a new feature. So you actually don't need to build any of this if you have the EP ever. 
I'll leave this connected for other type of uh, charge controllers if you're using lithium and it doesn't have low temperature uh, disconnect. It's a good way to add it to your system. And look at that, see we've come back to temperature and the charging started all on its own. That's pretty amazing. Okay, well, there you go, we learned something together. All right, and there you go, there's uh, the parameter settings for the EP Ever charge controller. Uh, this is great budget charge controller and it packs a whole lot of features. I just showed you how to set up the parameters and everything, which is great. And you can monitor what your charge controller is doing. Uh, if you like this video, like, subscribe. Thanks. Bye.